Please stand. John Paul, I'm a Franciscan prior of the renewal here to celebrate Mass with you uh, this evening, this first Sunday of Lent. Um, so let us join together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you. All the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and a bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings, so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy 
all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee to proclaim the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Well, what I'd like to do is, is take some of these prayers that we're praying in Lent. The prayers at the beginning of Mass, um, you can probably tell from my accent that I'm not from New York, right? I come from Nevada. I was born and raised in Reno, Nevada. Um, but growing up, I learned a very good lesson when I was young. If my mother told me to do something, she expected me to do something, and there were consequences if I didn't do what she said, right? So come to dinner, I was expected to come to dinner. Go wash your hands first, I had to go wash my hands first. When my mother said something, I had to listen. Well, our mother, the Holy Church, is preparing us to enter into this Lenten season. And the prayers that are placed before us, that I prayed for all of us, it's important for us to listen to what I asked for so that we're also recognizing when it's answered. So what was the opening prayer that I asked for us? If I didn't have it in front of me, I probably wouldn't know it myself. Right, because we often don't listen to those opening prayers. But they're always different, and it's always going to help us to understand what our Holy Mother, the Church, is trying to give us through the readings in this season. So let me relook at it together. I, I pray, grant Almighty God, through this yearly observance of Lent, that we may grow an understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct, pursue the effects. So basically what we're asking for is a little bit more of an understanding of the riches of our Father. As children of God, our Father wants us to enter into and receive those riches because out there, all of creation is longing for the revelation of the children of God for us to be who we are and to bring the grace out there. So Lent is a time that's set aside specifically for us through different, different means to take some time and look, what is it that we have that are these riches and am I actually uh, doing anything with them? And if I'm not, then I need to renew and purify my life because I'm not living in that fullness of what we're called to live. So being that it's the first Sunday of Lent, I'm a little bit more of a teacher than a preacher, so you'll have to kind of like deal with that a little bit, okay? Um, there's two words that you're going to hear all the way through Lent. And it's important that you understand a little bit um, of what it is those two words are. The first word today is covenant. We're going to hear covenant many times on the Sundays of Lent. And when you read the first reading, you heard it over and over and over again, right? What is a covenant? It dominates the first readings of every week in Sunday every Sunday in Lent, okay? Covenant comes from the Latin word convire, which means to bind together. 
We don't use that word very often in modern times. We use a different word that's similar, but it's different. The word we use is contract. We use contract a lot. We make a deal with someone, okay? But covenant for centuries was very common. And it's a serious commitment made between individuals or between nations. It defines a relationship with expectations. One of the few covenants that we still have in the present moment is the covenant of marriage. Right? I give myself to you and you give yourself to me. It's an exchange of persons. Whereas a contract is an exchange of goods. I give you three dollars and you give me a Big Mac. Right? Contract is an exchange of goods rather than ex an exchange of persons. And in the scriptures, we'll hear about this. The prophets will come and over and over and over again remind the people, the promised people, the children of God, return to the covenant because you're acting like a contract. And then some of the prophets get really maybe spicy in the sense that you're acting like a harlot, right? The people of Israel are like prostituting themselves to their gods. Superstition is kind of that way. And God is always, it's not about that, it's about a covenant and a relationship with God. So today, we're, we're hearing in the first reading about one of the several covenants. There's six covenants in the scriptures. Today, in the first reading, we're hearing about the covenant that God made with Noah. It's the second covenant. The first covenant was between Adam and Eve and God. The second covenant we hear today. God will never flood the entire earth again, and there will be my sign, the rainbow. We'll hear about the covenant with Abraham later in Lent, the covenant made with Moses, the covenant made with David, and then the promised everlasting covenant that was promised to Jeremiah, which we celebrate here, the everlasting covenant. So that's the first word. Second word, wilderness. Now I have something over you on this because I come from Nevada. I know what the wilderness is like. But when the scriptures are talking about wilderness, they're not talking about the Judean desert. They're not talking about the Sahara desert. They're not talking about the Nevada desert. When it's talking about the desert or the wilderness, they're not talking about a geographical location. The image of wilderness in the Bible means it's a time of testing. You go into the wilderness to be tested. Now the first place we heard of, we hear of this place of testing, and you'll hear it with the covenants again, is the people coming out of Egypt and they're going into the wilderness. The people were supposed to go into the wilderness for 40 days, right? You can hear, you hear that 40, like Lent is 40. And what happened? Well, the people come out and they're supposed to be going into the promised land and they're there on the side of the Jordan and Moses sends in 12 of the princes of the Israelites, the Hebrews, one from each tribe. And they were to go in and they were to reconnoiter the land. Reconnoiter means to go in and spy on it. Go and see if God's promises are really good. He says this land is good, go and see. So they go in and they see and they come back and they bring some of the produce, some of the honey, some of the grapes, things that are growing. And they come back 
and they, they give a report to Moses and all the people are excited because this is the promised land. We're finally out of this slavery of Egypt. Let's listen. 10 of the 12 give a report that says, look at these grapes, look at this honey. The land is incredible. But so are the people that are eating these grapes and this honey. They look like they're giants compared to us. We can't go. What is God expecting us to do going into this land? The people are going to crush us. And there's only two that stand up and said, we can go if God has told us to go. He will also give us everything that we need to enter into this promised land. If we just obey what he says, that's Joshua and Caleb. But the 10 start murmuring and start spreading fake news, right, to everyone around. And all of the Hebrew people start getting afraid. And they're saying, we can't go in there. Look it. The people are huge. Let's go back to Egypt. At least back there, when we were in slavery, we had enough to eat. And they want to kill Moses. So Moses prays. And the Lord says, how long will this people despise me? How long will they not believe in me, despite all of the signs that I have given to them? So Moses says, or the Lord says to Moses, I've heard this murmuring of the people of Israel and the number of days that they spied out the land. Therefore, for each one of the 40 days, your punishment will be one year. They had to be in the wilderness for 40 years because they did not pass the test. What's the test? Faithfulness to entering into a covenant with God. They were not faithful and they had to learn how to be faithful to enter into that relationship with God. So this 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus in the gospel today, Mark's gospel is very short, but Jesus goes into the desert, the wilderness, right after his baptism, and he goes, Mark says, he is driven into this desert. Luke talks about being driven by the Holy Spirit into this wilderness. We often think about the Holy Spirit doing good things for us, right? The Holy Spirit driving Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. Why? To prepare and see if the one who is going to enter the covenant will be faithful. And does Jesus come through those temptations? Yes. He is faithful and from that coming out, he begins toward the journey towards Jerusalem to lay down his life for his bride. He is faithful. What I'd like to do is just look at what those temptations are. Because this Lenten period is aimed at us heading towards the Easter Vigil. At the Easter Vigil, we renew our baptismal promises, which is the covenant. That's when we entered into that covenant with God. So all of Lent is aimed at the Easter Vigil. If you want to look at what the Easter Vigil is, you can look at it in um, the Missalette or online or wherever you, you can find it. But what are the temptations? Hunger. Each one of the temptations always ends and Satan is always tempting towards the identity of the child of God. 
turn these rocks into stone. What's he saying? Why would a good father leave you hungry? Second, it's about reputation. Others will speak well of you if you do this. The third one, possessions. You have something. What's our experience? Does our identity ever get wrapped up in what can I do rather than I am? We are children of God by adoption through our baptism. If I can do something or not, that does not change my identity. Our identity can also get wrapped up in a good reputation. A good reputation can stop us from doing things that we know might be difficult and others might not like what we're doing. And we're afraid of being a prophet or prophetically saying something, the truth in a situation where it's uncomfortable to tell the truth. But the temptation is to have a good reputation rather than to speak the truth or to do something in love. Or sometimes our identity is wrapped up in our possessions. There was a parish mission once that I was giving and this woman, I felt sorry for her, but she said it. I am someone because my husband drives a Lexus. I wanted to laugh, but I also wanted to cry. That's not why she has any worth. And it's a temptation to do that. And that's what our Holy Mother, the Church, is giving us this Lenten time to do, is to relook at the very great gift that our, our, our Father has given to us as calling us children. And we're looking at this first week, the hidden riches that are in Jesus, because he's the one who shows us what it is like to live in the fullness of the Spirit he, by being God, we, by adoption. So my brothers and sisters, Lent is a time for renewal. It's the renewal of the covenant that will come at the Easter Vigil. God has been revealed to us as our good Father and we, his children. Lent is the time for our wilderness. It's a time of testing for us, these 40 days. Jesus has shown us how to overcome and be victorious over temptation. Our identity does not lie in what we do, in what we possess, or in a good reputation. It relies on the fact that we have been adopted as gift. It's a total gift to us. Are we making our choices with that in mind? That's what Lent is about. It's this asking. So don't be afraid if you start having all kinds of interesting temptations this Lent. I don't know what you gave up or what you're adding on, but I wouldn't be surprised if the temptations come pretty quick. And just look at them for what they are. Their temptations and offer it up. So, what's the takeaway? What's the takeaway for today? The opening prayer talks about this time being a gift for us to understand more of the hidden riches that are available to us. But really, we're only going to look for those hidden riches that are available to us 
if we grow in understanding that we are in a covenant with God, a relationship. We have been given to God and he is ours. He is our father and we are his children. And that's why Lent is such a great gift for us as we enter into this wilderness towards the renewal of the covenant. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Now we place before our Heavenly Father those petitions that arise in our heart. That all baptized Christians faithfully proclaim the reign of God and turn to him in every temptation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That political leaders avoid temptations of power and greed and serve with sincere generosity those they represent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who face obstacles, be they physical or emotional, grow in faith-filled stamina and determination. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are on their journey to the Easter sacraments experience the welcome and support of their communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear that the members of this assembly in prayer and fasting be drawn ever more deeply into the Paschal mystery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our personal intentions and for all whom have asked for our prayers, we pray for the repose of the souls of Leitha Cerulli, Miguel Concepcion, and Judith Alfonso. Let us pray to the Lord. For Gladys Lopez, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, your own petition. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we place before you all these petitions and ask that you kindly hear them. Open our eyes to recognize your answers so that we may also return thanks and glory to you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Hosea.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings. For with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end we acclaim. <laughs> indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Agnew. 
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes bread.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread by which faith is nourished, hope increased and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. So this evening, uh, first I just want to say a word of thanks to Father John Paul from the Franciscan Friars of the Newell for helping us in the absence of Bishop Byrne today. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Father John Paul might not know, I'm not sure, maybe he does, but uh, Bishop Byrne and I were actually with your sisters, the Franciscan Sisters of the Renewal, um, just a couple hours ago, actually. We had a, um, there is a discernment group of young women that, um, I help oversee and guide and, and Bishop Byrne supports who are discerning religious life. And so today they organized a visit to um, Father is a member of the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, which really had their foundation in the Bronx and now have spread across the world and I believe still serves as servant of the Friars. Uh, and for how many years now, Father? Seven. Seven years he's been there. The servant, meaning um, in the Franciscan, well, of course, this was a Franciscan parish founded by the OFMs, but um, servant for them is like the superior, so he's been given that, that charge, that responsibility. So we're really grateful to have him with us. He's been here before to help with confessions, and I'm grateful he could help us with, with Mass. But So we were with the sisters earlier, with Bishop Byrne and a group of about 12 women who were in discernment, and they really were just so gracious and wonderful down in there. Our Lady of Angels Parish, uh, I should say, uh, convent, which is 113th Street in Harlem between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. So... It's great to go from one Franciscan to another in, in the home sitting next to St. Francis. So you're very welcome here anytime, Father. Then I want to uh, first just a word of gratitude for our community for Ash Wednesday. It was what a blessed day it was. I want to say just how gratifying it was as your priest to see um, throughout the day, really to see the church filled again. It was, it was such a blessing for those that may be following us online. Um, and it was really, it was kind of a, um, a really lift. I said to Father Pergini and Bishop Byrne how uplifting it was to see people just all day long just really filling the church despite the challenging conditions of COVID and the winter. Um, my hope, my prayer is that they'll keep coming. So they'll keep coming. So if you know people came on Ash Wednesday, can you invite them to come on Sunday? Because I would love to see the church fill again um, as we experienced this past week. We also um, have begun our devotions for Lent, so among of which would be the um, Stations of the Cross. So this year we're going to be doing, since we added in the 7.15 p.m. Spanish Mass, we're adjusting the stations so that the English stations will be 1 p.m. We have a, the, one of the school classes will be doing stations. Uh, we can't bring the whole school together anymore as we used to do a whole, all school because of the requirements uh, for school. They want them to be just in cohorts, so one class at a time, so there's no mixing. So uh, we've been filming them on YouTube, but so the, the English stations are open to the community at 1 p.m., and we will have Stations of the Cross in Spanish at 8 p.m. after the 7.15 p.m. Mass. Um, and of course, the church remains open for people that want to come and make private devotions. We know those times don't always accommodate everybody's um, itineraries. I want to uh, point out that um, in a couple weeks, we will have our Cardinal's Appeal in Pew. So I met with a representative of the diocese. Um, we, we kind of introduced it a couple weeks back, and, and so that in Pew appeal will be coming. I just want to give you a heads up, March 6th and 7th. So that'll be coming down the pike. We have uh, just a couple adjustments to our, our schedule for youth group and young adult ministry. Um, our youth group on Wednesdays has been growing, our high school youth group. Thank God. They, we had a big group of them come in after the 7.15 p.m. Mass to get their, their ashes. Um, and that, once a month, we're going to have a holy hour instead of just the normal group. So this coming um, Wednesday, for those that have anybody in the high school group, it will be from 8 until 9.30 here in the church instead of 7 to 8.30 downstairs. They're going to come a little early downstairs. 
And then, as you know, this Mass, the 5 p.m. Mass, once a month on the last Saturday, is especially dedicated to our young adult community. It's open up to the young adults of the Bronx, but uh, most especially our local group, um, Dave Lance and a few others are, have been building and working on a choir, so they'll be joining us for the 5 p.m. Mass next Saturday, and then afterward they'll go downstairs for some food and music and fellowships. So feel free to invite, invite those um, of 18 to 39 for that gathering. And let us stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down your head for the blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into the hell of Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world to the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in singing our final hymn, The Glory of These Forty Days. <laughs>